With action and suspense out of the Old West comes the most famous hero of them all, Hopalong Cassidy, starring William Boyd. The ring of the silver spurs heralds the most amazing man ever to ride the prairies of the early West, Hopalong Cassidy, the same Hoppy you cheer in motion pictures, and the same California you've laughed at a million times. Raw courage and quick shooting have built a legend around this famous hero. Hopalong is a name to be feared, respected, and admired, for this great cowboy rides the trails of adventure and excitement. William Boyd as Hopalong Cassidy, and Andy Clyde as California. Here's Hoppy now with another new story. The women of Windy Ridge, we call this one, and it happened in western Oklahoma in the narrow stretch that lies between Texas and Kansas. We had no real business being there at all since we were on our way to a Kansas roundup. But California had remembered that Liz McCoy lived in a place called Windy Ridge. Liz McCoy, who could make the best beef stew west of Topeka. So in Windy Ridge, we went looking for Liz and her beef stew. But what we found there had nothing to do with food. Before we rode into the little town... Look here, you. I'm getting sick and tired of this, Wade. They tell me you haven't done a thing yet. Why don't you let us alone, Steve? You may be mayor of this town, but I'm sheriff of the county. But you've had three hours on this job and you've done nothing. What's the matter? She's a woman, Steve. It ain't the same with women. It is when they're killers... I want her taken, Wade. I want her taken now. Now, listen, Steve. Liz has dynamite in that house, and she's promised to use it if we rush her. What are you doing? Letting her buffalo you? All right, Steve. Hang around a minute. You'll see how it is. Liz? Can you hear me? I'll hear you all right, and I'm sick of hearing you. I'm giving you one last warning, Liz. Come on, we'd better get back across the street like she says. Hey, listen, Wade. Shut up, Steve. That woman isn't fooling. Here, let's get in this doorway. It's getting dark. Maybe after a while she'll fall asleep. Not Liz McCoy. She never sleeps. And just the same, we'll wait. She might even decide to give up. Hey, look, Wade. A couple of waddies stopping in front of Liz's place. i better warn them. Now, wait. Yeah, let's see what Liz does about it. And a stranger, so it won't matter. Steve, you've gone crazy. Wait. You let one yap out of you, and I'll wrap this gun around your head. You've gone crazy. You've let this reform fight go to your brain. Hey, look, they're knocking on her door. I'm going to stop You're them. going to do nothing. That woman's a murderess. And this is going to deliver her into our hands. Not if it means getting them fellers killed. Hey, get back from that door. Get back before you get <laughs> Now, back to Hopalong Cassidy and our story, The Women of Windy Ridge. With California seeking out Liz McCoy, who makes the best beef stew west of Topeka, Hoppy has come to the town of Windy Ridge, Oklahoma. But here, as they're standing knocking at Liz McCoy's door, a warning shout comes from across the street, and a charge of dynamite explodes almost in their faces. Hoppy! Oh, God. Gone. You, you all right, Hoppy? <coughs> yeah, I'm all right. But I wouldn't have been if somebody hadn't yelled. Who did that? I did. Here, we'd better all get back out of the way. No telling what that woman will do next. Hey, look, Wade. That explosion tangled up the whole front of her house. Maybe it got Liz, too. And maybe it didn't. We won't take any more chances. What's this all about? Who are you fellas? Well, my name's Wade. I'm sheriff here. That explosion, what? Liz McCoy did that. She's holed up in there. And we aim to get her out. Now, wait a minute. Why is she holed up? Yeah, and why do you fellas aim to get her out? Liz McCoy happens to be a friend of ours. And she also happens to be in trouble. The marshal of this place was stabbed to death this afternoon, and it seems that Liz McCoy did it. Liz McCoy? Sheriff, you, you, oh, you just ain't making sense. Liz McCoy wouldn't kill nobody. I've known her for years, and she just ain't that kind. Well, people change. Anyway, the marshal's body is lying inside her house, and she won't give herself up. What happens if she gives herself up? She'll get a trial. A fair trial? 
sure it'll be a fair trial. What kind of people do you think we are? I don't know. But if you're sure she'll have a fair trial, I'm willing to try going in for a talk with her. Uh, hold on now. She's liable to blast your head off if you get anywhere near. Maybe. But I'll take that chance. And I'm taking it with you, Hoppy. Oh, all right. If you want to take the chance... Hey, you might try going in from the side, from the top of that porch next door. We'll try and keep her attention out here. Sounds like a good idea. Come on, California. Dark in here. Wish there was a moon or something. I can't see a thing. I can see you all right. You don't climb back out that window, I'm going to blow your heads off. Don't shoot, Liz. It's California. Uh, California calls. And hop along, Cassidy, Liz. We just want to help you. Why, you two ornery polecats, what are you doing here? Liz, you're in trouble. We want to help you. Hoppy, nobody can help me. What happened? You didn't kill the marshal, did you? Oh, I never killed nobody in my life, but that ain't going to help me now. Well, if you didn't kill him, Liz, give yourself up. Stand trial. What, and be hanged for something I didn't do, not me? Oh, Liz, they don't hang women out here. That's where you're wrong, California. I've seen a woman hanged. Margie Benjamin over to Pascal's Gulch. The way things are in this town, I don't have a chance. Besides, I ain't gonna let her mock me. Sit there while I'm on trial, a-grinning at me. Who are you talking about, Liz? Why, I'm talking about that Dolly Chester. Her and her fancy feathers. If it wasn't for Dolly Chester, I wouldn't be in this trouble. Liz, give yourself up and stand trial. No, not me, Hoppy. I'd rather shoot it out here in my own place and die with my self-respect. What is it that's wrong, Liz? What's the cause of all this? Why, they've gone crazy, that's what's wrong. Crazy with reform. And that woman's the cause of it. Now get on out of here, you two, before them others try sneaking in here while I'm talking. And you can tell that sheriff that I've got two shotguns waiting for them as I don't get with the dynamite. Well, what'd she say? She doesn't think she'll get a fair trial. What's behind all this, Sheriff? What was the cause of the marshal being killed? Well, there's a reform movement on in this town, and there's already three men dead because of it. Liz McCoy got into trouble because she wouldn't close her gambling place. Gambling place? You mean Liz had been running one? That's right. And when Trainer ordered her to close it, she told him to go soak his head. Who's Dolly Chester? Liz said something about Dolly Chester being the cause of all the trouble. I guess you could say she is. It's Dolly Chester that's leading the reform movement. And I can't stand here talking. I've got to do something about getting Liz McCoy out of that house. Wait a second, Sheriff. Why don't you hold off a while? I've been thinking that if this Dolly Chester guaranteed Liz a fair trial, Liz might give herself up. Yeah? And who's going to get Dolly Chester to do that? <laughs> not me. Or not any other man in this town. I'll talk to her. You mean you'll try? Ain't a man in the world ever got anywhere talking to feathers. And the same will go for you. Yeah? Where can I find her? Well, that won't give you no trouble. The biggest and best-looking house in town. And she's the prettiest woman in these parts. And if you think you can handle her, you're plum loco. Wait a moment, friend. I'll walk with you. I heard what you said to the sheriff back there about talking Liz McCoy into giving herself up. It made me wonder. What about? Why you should want to meddle in things that don't concern you. Liz McCoy is a friend of mine. And you think you'll help her by giving her that kind of advice? How would you help her? I'm working on that. I'm doing my best to get her out of town. That would make her seem guilty. It should also help her to live longer. You must be unaware of the bitterness there is in this town, friend. The reform movement they have going has incited a lot of people to hysteria. The kind of hysteria that breeds lynch mobs. You speak as a man of education, but I don't know you. I'm Fergal, a gambler. I run a place called the Blue Emerald. I see. Well, I appreciate your advice, but I think you're wrong. I've never known anyone to help himself by going on the run. 
If Liz McCoy stays in Windy Ridge, she may pay with her life. I know that, and Liz knows it. Liz and I are in the same business, and I always take care of my kind. Suppose this Dolly Chester is willing to guarantee Liz McCoy a fair trial. Dolly Chester will guarantee nothing to anyone, and your interference will only confuse things. It'd take gunplay for you to get Liz from under the nose of that sheriff. He's tough and determined, and he has determined men with him. Well, you're a man of your own opinions, friend. So I must warn you to stay out of it. And if I don't? You may not see the end of this street. Then I guess I'd better go on my way alone. Yes, perhaps you had. Good night, friend. Hey, you there! Sorry I'm not stopping. You better stop! Why? Aren't you good on moving targets? Stay out of this, whoever you are. I'm telling you to stop. Better change your business, stranger. You're in a deadly trade. And this is one job I'm going to finish. Markram! Where is he, Markram? I'm here, Fergal. You'd better come and get your gunman. I have business of my own with Dolly Chester. You wanted to see me? Yes, I did. Do you always stare like that? So that's why they called you Feathers. Who calls me that? Oh, several people. Maybe the whole town. Plumes. And never have I seen them so delightfully displayed. <laughs> and what else did they tell you? They told me there wasn't a man in the world who could handle you. And I suppose you came here because of that? To satisfy yourself as to whether they're right or wrong? I came here because a friend of mine is in trouble. Who are you? The name is Cassidy, but my friends call me Hoppy. You're a stranger here. Yes, I sort of get around. But I want to talk about Liz McCoy. I'm going to ask you to help her. Help her? How? By assuring her that she'll have a fair trial if she gives herself up. And why should I do that? You're a woman. Yes, I am. Probably more woman than you've ever seen in your life for all of your getting around. Hmm. And that's just the reason I won't help Liz McCoy. Because the man she killed today was the man I was going to marry. <laughs> Now, back to Hopalong Cassidy and our story, The Women of Windy Ridge. Hoppy has been given a couple of hours in which to save the life of Liz McCoy, an old friend of California's. Liz, barricaded in her home, swears she's innocent of the killing of Brent Trainer and won't give herself up unless she is guaranteed a fair trial by Dolly Chester, leader of the town's reform movement against gaming halls. Hoppy has just made the request to Dolly Chester, and the lady has just flatly refused him. You know what it'll mean, don't you? You are saying no. I suppose it could mean anything. It means that Liz McCoy will blow herself up when the sheriff and his men move in, and maybe she'll blow up one or two of the others with her. I don't see how that concerns me. You know, the more I talk to you, the more I feel that nothing concerns you except those fancy feathers you're wearing. Now you're being impudent. And I suppose that is being disloyal. I suppose nobody even dares to be impudent to the Queen of Windy Ridge. Miss Chester, what you need is a good spanking. Oh? And do you think you're man enough to give it to me? Yes, I think I am. I guess you might be at that. I guess you might. Uh, uh Hoppy, go back to your Liz McCoy. Tell her I guarantee that she'll get a fair trial. Well, Cassidy, I'm sure relieved. And I'm much obliged to you. I've got that deputy of mine ready to take Liz McCoy over to Reddington. Be safer for her there. Safer for all of us. <laughs> 
Sheriff, how would Fergal figure in this? I don't know. Blue Emerald's just outside the town limits. It's the only gambling place around that the mayor can't close up. Has Fergal always been friendly with Liz McCoy? <laughs> Liz has always hated his insides. And she's never been backward about telling him. What about this reform movement? What do you think of it? Cassidy, this is a raw country. And its people have to blow off steam somehow. Yeah. Bottle them up and you breed trouble. Yeah, you're right there, Sheriff. Steve Graham was a good mayor until he started off on this campaign. Now he's full of fever and so are the rest of the folks. And the worst part of it is going to come when those trail herds from Texas start moving through here next week. With this no gambling, no drinking fever, the folks are just waiting for him. You're going to see a bloody time, Cassidy. A bloody time. Was the gambling harmful? Oh, not that I ever noticed. Marshall always kept everything under control. Who's that? Well, I couldn't tell for sure under that lantern out there. But I think it's my partner and the mayor. Mayor? Well, it can't be. No, we died one... Hey! I thought you and my deputy were taking Liz McCoy over to Reddington. Uh, not me, Wade. There was bail put up. And Judge Lawson said she could go free until the trial. Bail? Of all the... Who put it up? Fergal. He said she was his kind and he was going to help her. And Liz wants to see you, Hoppy, right away. Over to her house. She said to come even if it was late. Bail, that rips everything. Come on, Pete. We better start swearing in more deputies. We're going to need them. And Cassidy... If you and your pal are willing, I'll start with you two. That explosion sure tangled this place up. Seems kind of silly to be knocking on this door. Hold it a second. Why? Didn't you hear that? What? I thought I heard voices. And somebody sort of gasped or choked. And the light just went out. Come on, let's get through these right timbers. Oh, yeah. Might have been easier if we'd have gone around the back way. Ain't no back way. House sets into the side of the hill. Hoppy, there's something wrong here. Wish there was more light. Yeah. Well, at least we're through that stuff. Yeah. This ought to be the front room. I... What? Dog, gone it. What's the matter? Went flat in my fool face. Take quiet a second. Liz? Liz, are you here? Like being in a grave. Like, uh... Oh! What's what? the matter now? Uh, push my face into cobwebs or something. Hoppy, ain't you got a match? This is getting on my nerves. I'm way ahead of you. There's a lamp we can light if I can get to it. Uh-oh. Gotta light another match. Hey, what was that? Could be more of those boards just falling. And it could be somebody making them fall. There. Now we got the lamp. Yeah, yeah, that's better. Let's see if Liz is in this other room. Yeah. Well, 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 I'll be all darned. Sitting in a chair fast asleep. I'm afraid it's going to be a long sleep, California. Take another look. There's a knife buried in her chest. <laughs> Suicide, I tell you. That woman knew she'd be convicted of the marshal's murder, and she killed herself. I don't agree with you, Mr. Mayor. Liz McCoy wasn't the type of woman to kill herself, whatever kind of problem she might have had. Ah, that's ridiculous. Anyone can kill themselves, for any reason. Sure. And I'm sure that's what our coroner's jury will say about it. And with this over and done with, we'll finish the business of cleaning up this town. I'd say you've already finished it, and maybe the town as well. Well... What do you mean by that? Steve, I think Mr. Cassidy's right. I think it's time to let up on our crusade. You've been getting too upset over it, Steve. Why, I... You've closed up all the gambling places in town. Don't you think that's enough? With four people dead, I think it's more than enough. Uh, Mr. Cassidy. Yes, Miss Chester. Could I talk to you? Mind if I make it a little later? Right now, I'm heading for the county recorder's office. Do you have to go through every paper in the place? Can't that clerk help you? Shh, quiet. The clerk's an old man and he doesn't see very well. I'm just about through anyway. Right, Hoppy. But I sure don't get it. You will, California, because I think I've come up with the exact reason for all this trouble they've been having in Windy Ridge. Hello, Cassidy. 
Clean. Don't tell me you're one of the few people around here who can read. Hello, Fergo. Yes, I can read. It's a habit I picked up when I was quite young. Thinking of buying some property in the neighborhood? Not for a few years yet. I still like to get around and see things. I imagine you see a lot of things, Cassidy. Too many, perhaps. I notice you're wearing a gun, Fergo. You didn't have it on yesterday. No, I only strap it on when I feel there's the possibility of personal unpleasantness. I see. Of course, I could take it off again. If you were willing to leave town, you might think about that, my friend. Yeah. There goes bad medicine, Hoppy. A chunk of ice. And probably chain lightning with a gun. He wears it as though he's used to it. But we can't worry about that. Not now, anyway. So you came back, Hoppy. Didn't you think I would? I hoped you would. Because I... I can't seem to get you out of my mind. Well, that could be a compliment. It's meant to be. And coming from a woman as beautiful as you are... Well, I'm impressed. Do you like my house, Hoppy? I guess it's about the fanciest home I've ever been in. Especially for a town like this. I chose this town deliberately, Hoppy. I picked it out and came to it when it was just beginning. I decided to make it my town because I wanted to grow with it. Mm -hmm. And it is growing. We're the county seat now. Soon there'll be a railroad coming here. It's going to be a big town. And I'm going to be the most important woman in it. But a woman doesn't like to go her way alone. Oh, Hoppy, stop twirling your hat. Just look at me. How about Trainer, the marshal? Oh, that was never a particularly flaming affair. At least uh, not on your part. That's right. From what I hear, he had it pretty bad for you, though. Perhaps that's why I said I'd marry him. I really only wanted to be kind. But with you, Hoppy... Trainer had it so bad for you that he didn't quite know what to do when he found out you were crooked. When he found out I was... What on earth are you talking about? I'm talking about the fact that you own a half interest in Fergal's gambling hall. I'm talking about how you engineered this so-called reform movement so all the town competition would be wiped out. With Fergal's place the only one left because it's beyond the city limits. Wherever did you get such a fantastic idea? From a very factual source, the county recorder's office. You didn't have much time to lose, did you? Most people out here can't read. And the recorder's an old man almost blind. You weren't very likely to be caught. But I guess the marshal caught on, didn't he? But he loved you. So he made the mistake of telling you he knew, and you killed him. Liz McCoy killed him. He died in her home. Liz McCoy would have used a gun. She was that kind. The knife was your touch, Dolly. And you did the same thing to Liz to make it look like a guilty suicide. Hoppy, in a few years it won't matter. But right now, the town wouldn't like it if it knew about this. No. It'd be a shame to have me get in trouble for it, don't you think, Hoppy? Sort of a waste. Well, you're a very beautiful woman. And you have a lot on me. Mm -hmm. Enough to keep me entirely in your control. Entirely. Mm -hmm. How about it, Hoppy? I'll think about it, Dolly. But in the meantime, I'm going to walk you over to the sheriff's office and turn you in for murder. You fool. You insolent fool. Fargo! I'm here, Dolly. Don't move, Cassidy. Just keep those hands and that hat away from those holsters. Not giving me much of a break, are you, Fergo? <laughs> I never give anybody a break, Cassidy. It's the way I do business. If this were stud poker, you'd be high man. But high card showing isn't always the best, is it? It is this time, Cassidy. Because you don't even get a chance to draw. <laughs> Now, back to Hopalong Cassidy. Take it easy, Hoppy. This leg's going to lay you up for a while. How about Dolly Chester? We got her, Cassidy. And you know something? She's already squawking about getting a fair trial. <laughs> <laughs> but how'd you happen to down Fergal when he had the drop on you? Uh, I figured ahead of time that I'd be in the middle, so I had a danger inside my hat. But it almost wasn't big enough. Well, you did a great job, Cassidy. 
The town already has its sense back. And I'm not going to have to worry about them Texas trail riders. But uh, how did you know, Hoppy? How did you figure it was Dolly Chester? Did you ever know Liz McCoy to keep a dirty house, California? Church? No, she was about the cleanest party alive. Right. So when you were crawling around on her floor last night, I didn't see how you could be pushing your face into cobwebs, like you said. But I did figure it could be feathers with Miss Chester wearing them as she sneaked by us in the dark. She was feathers? Yeah. Well, I'll be gold darned. Yes, sir. I'll be golden. <laughs> and that brings to a close the story of the women of Windy Ridge. In Hoppy's next story, there is plenty of adventure and excitement, and it carries the unusual title, Right Rope, Wrong Neck. Hopalong Cassidy, starring William Boyd, is transcribed and produced in the West by Walter White, Jr. The Women of Windy Ridge was written by Buckley Angel, with original music under the personal direction of Albert Glasser. All stories are based upon the characters created by Clarence E. Mulford. This is a Commodore production. <laughs>